This video will explain how to install the eSword Bible software program and the Sunset Bible Library books into eSword on Android phones, Android tablets, and Chromebooks. All three of them are installed the same way. We begin by looking at a screen of a Chromebook, although Android would look very much the same. And as we're looking at it, we need to install eSword by going to the Google Play Store. Once we're in the Play Store, we need to type in eSword, E-S-W-O-R-D, so we can find the eSword app to install. This does require you to have internet access. So we click on eSword app for Android. And now we tell it to install it. Once it's installed, we can now minimize or close that window and go down to the launcher and find eSword already installed. So let's click on it to open it. And on a tablet or a Chromebook, it doesn't take up the full screen, so let's make it large enough so that it does. The first time you ever open eSword, it's going to show you several screens explaining some of the different aspects of eSword. We're just going to click through those quickly so we can get to the rest of it. We begin with this opening screen in eSword. It shows the King James Version of the Bible. Now let's add another Bible. So we open the Bible tab, and we're going to choose the English Standard Version. Again, this requires the Internet for this part. We clicked on ESV. Now we click on the Download button in the upper right corner, and it's installed that. Now let's install another free Bible program. This one is called the Lexham English Bible, a recent English translation. Again, we click on LEB, then we click on download. And once you see the blue check box on the right hand side, then we know it's installed. Now we go back and let's install now a couple of commentaries. First one we'll choose to install is by Albert Barnes, a classic commentary set on the whole Bible. We wait while it installs. And now let's choose another commentary. This one is by David Guzik. Click to install. And that's completed. Now we go back, upper left corner, click on that arrow, then on the three little parallel lines. Now we're going to install a dictionary or two. Let's begin by installing the Hastings Dictionary of the Bible. Although it's an older dictionary, it's a good one. Once I completed, now let's choose the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia and install it. You might notice at the bottom of the dictionary list, as in the Bible and the commentary sets, you see some dictionaries that have a blue lock next to them. That means you have to purchase those. So right now we're just sticking with those things that are free. Now let's install a couple of lexicons. Lexicons are ways for us to know what the Hebrew or the Greek words behind the English mean. So first we take mounts. Standard reference work today. It covers the Greek. Now we're going to do Brown Driver Briggs for the Hebrew. And Thayer. Now we go back. The text on our screen of the Bible is not large enough for me to read comfortably, so let me show you how to make that larger. Go to Display Settings and slide to the right to make the font size larger. Now you can see right beneath it, it shows what that will look like. That seems to be large enough for us, about size 24. So now we go back. Now you see it's a larger 
Now, besides the Bible, we can show other things on the screen as well with those boxes at the top in the middle. When we click on this one, it shows the Bible on the top left. Below it, it shows what they call the King James Version Plus, which has Strong's numbers. And on the right-hand side at the top are our reference works showing cross-references. And then the bottom right was all commentary. So let's change by simply clicking on KJV in the top right, we could change it to ESV for the Bible we're looking at. And we can change our commentary at the bottom by clicking on that and changing it from F.B. Meyer over to uh, Albert Barnes by just clicking on that. Now, here's Albert Barnes. And we'll go back to the Bible. We can see bottom right window is now Albert Barnes on John 3.16. To go to an earlier chapter within John, we click on the left arrow, the, the blue arrow you can see there. If you want it to look up a word, you can click on the word witness or any other word, and it will look that up in the dictionary for you. Now let's install the Sunset Bible Library. In this particular case, I've inserted a flash drive into the USB port on this Chromebook and as soon as I did it notifies me as you can see in the bottom right corner that a removable de device has been detected in other words it knows when I plugged in the flash drive but now we want to import the books that are on that flash drive into eSword and so we say yes that's what we want to do then we bring up this new window and you can see where it says eSword SIBI and we can tell it to go open the folder where all of our books in the Sunset Bible Library are located on that flash drive. And we're going to select all of them by highlighting them. You can do that by clicking on the first item in the list and it turns blue. Then by holding down on the shift key, scroll all the way down to the last one and click and then they're all selected. Then when we click on open, that installs all of those books in there. Now we can go back to commentary and go up instead of Albert Barnes. Now we'll see both SIBI's commentary and McGuigan commentaries now installed. There's much more to be learned about eSword, but this was primarily designed to show you how to install eSword and then this install the Sunset Bible Library.